Hi, how you doing? You know, I just, I know I've been doing it all the time, but I just like the spin. I think it's funny. You know, I just think the, the whole spin thing, I don't know, it's very uh, cinematic, you know, you know. What do you mean funny? Like, uh, do I amuse you? You know, am I like a clown funny? No, what do you mean? By the way, that's my Joe Pesci. And sometimes when bill collectors call, I do that and they go, Joe? Anyway, welcome to part three of the hardest thing you've ever practiced, all right? Uh, the hardest, simplest thing you've ever practiced. That's what I'm calling this, because uh, it is really a difficult thing. It, it, it encompasses a lot of the, the, the elements of our playing as we play through the night. Uh, playing simultaneously, playing linearly, they're all in there, kind of, you know? And it's a, it's a really good practice. So I, I modified it a little bit on the, what I'm going to show you right away. Uh, so this is going to be, this, this part two is going to be in two parts, actually. Uh, right away I'm going to do something on the pad, which is a modified version of what I did in part one, which will be great for you to warm up before a gig. Great. Uh, it's a little quicker to get through. You know, it's not quite as long to get from beginning to end. You can practice it at different speeds. But the, the, the importance of it is it's kind of like yoga in a way, where, where in yoga when you do balance poses, if you know, uh, there are your nerve endings and your muscles and stuff, they, there's a firing thing going on to keep your muscles just right so you can stand in that pose. And it's really good for your brain-muscle connection. This is the same because you're playing, you know, maybe the first uh, two triplets with one hand, the, the second two of the triplets with your other hand, or the last two, uh, the, the, the last and the first of the triplets with one hand and the middle two with, your, with the other hand. Because you're doing that and you're, you're, you're changing from different permutations of that, this causes the same thing. You, you really have to begin to fire those nerve, uh, nerve endings and the, I'm sorry, neuron cells in the brain really have to fire just right to make it work. And if you get them get them in firing patterns, so to speak, uh, you're going to see that you're playing that night, it's going to be more in focus, sharper, you know, just more clarity. And I'm finding that, uh, you know, and I've always done a, a, a version of this in my playing, but never this concentrated. And I'm finding that right away in my playing, I'm seeing the difference. Anyway, let's get right to it. Let's start with the pad stuff, and then we'll go to the set. We're going to try to keep this video hopefully under 20 minutes long. Anyway, stay tuned. Here we go. thing or the simplest hardest thing you've ever had to do um, so again we're taking that same idea which uh, I had started with left right right left right 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 that's how this exercise starts and for if you're right-handed it'll be right left left right left left I'm gonna stretch it out to the symbols and it would be uh, left right right left right right left right right that is how it starts it gets more more involved in that now I'm going to also place my bass drum on the downbeats. And I'm doing this as a triplet figure, right? So it would be one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, so the bass drum is on all four. And you know, there's a couple of ways to count that. Uh, I know there's a, there's a couple of guys on the internet that go one lolly, two lolly, I don't know, I never learned that way, I don't know what that is. Uh, I know another really good way is one triplet, two triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, I like one and a two and a three and a four, and a, even though you can confuse that with the 16 notes, but I like that. Uh, so that's how I'm going to count it in this video. I'm going to put the bass drum on the downbeats. One and a two and a three and a four and a, I'm going to put the hi-hat on two and four. One and a two and a three and a four. Right? And that's how we're going to start. And then we're going to get into all those other permutations. So, if you're like me, if you're trying to be a working drummer, and, you know, I'll tell you the truth. Uh, you, you can make a living as a drummer. You can do it. Um, 
you know, there's a there's a, this guy on YouTube. I'm gonna just call him Mr. Sixty Sixty Forty. You know, uh, we would we would have teased him when we were on the cruise ships and called him one of our jazz Nazis. And um, you know, if it's not this, it's not it's not real jazz. And if you're not playing jazz, you're not really a drummer. Uh, that kind of stuff. And, and that, that's a bunch of garbage. It really is. Uh, you know, when I was studying in New York City, and I would I would. Joe Casadas, I was with Joe Casadas. He'd call me sometimes, and he'd say, "Hey, Steve Gadd's coming in. And we're gonna, I'm gonna work on something with him over his drums." Because he was, it was the Martin Drum Shop, and they built drums. And I'd go down, and I would just hang out in the room <laughs> practicing. But Steve Gadd sometimes would answer a question or two, and I remember him saying, uh, "Don't, don't try to be a jazz drummer or a rock drummer, reggae drummer, or whatever. Just be a drummer." Just be a drummer. Now, will there be four tastes that you have, you know, stuff you do better than others? Yeah, sure. Uh, are there going to be stuff that comes easier to you? Yeah. Um, and really for me, you know, the, uh, the um, majority of gigs that I get are rock, R&B, and pop. And then occasionally I get calls for jazz. And uh, on, on the cruise ships, I probably did the most jazz. And um, guys would tease me, you know, and they would say that I was a rock drummer who swang well. You know, and and but then they would want they definitely wanted rock drummers more in the big bands on cruise ships because we have a harder hit, and we would make the band play with us. So that was kind of something that happened. So there's there's benefits to that. Even though, yeah, I agree with them. I one guy even said because, uh, and I understand that he was taking lessons from him too. Said I don't know if that's true though. Said oh you have kind of a little bit of a Max Weinberg sound in your swing. I don't really know what that meant. And you know I did a lot of. Springsteen covers in, in bands I was with uh, in New York and Jersey, so I don't know. Maybe that style influenced me. Anyway, but, so I went off on that tangent to say when you have limited amounts of time and you just want to be a good player, a good player, you want to do something that's going to really get those neural maps working. And again, I, I you know, when you're playing drums, your neurons are firing. And I have, a, if I have a gig tonight, maybe I had a busy week between teaching and the channel and whatever other stuff I had to do that week. I didn't get a time to put in a lot of practice. And maybe it's a gig I know, but I want to be warm. And how? And you know, and um, don't don't be fooled into thinking that the drums comes from here. It doesn't. It comes from here. And you, your neurons have to fire in a certain pattern. And this exercise is a quick way of making those neurons fire. You can do it in under like 20 minutes and it's going to take you your lifetime to get it perfect, which is beautiful. And I notice a difference when I do it and when I don't do it. And this really helps your playing simultaneously, your independence. And then, you know, I'm going to show you in, in part three, when you change this to 16th notes, how you can really use it in polyrhythms and all that kind of stuff. So that when you do get that call by, you know, the jazz Nazi can't, uh, can't make a gig and you got to fill in for him, you can, and maybe you're a, you play in a Zeppelin tribute band making, you know, good money. Um, uh, or like I, I did a Pink Floyd tribute band for a while. I loved it. I loved it. The, the playing was simple, but playing that simply all the time took a challenge from me. Took a challenge. Shout out to Rob Russell. Uh, and he knew we worked together a lot and we had a great time doing that stuff. Um, so anyway... Let's continue. So this will really get your neural maps focused and running, and calibrated. That's a good way. That's a little Star Trek way. You're you're calibrating your neural maps. I like that. Okay. So the first leg will be like we did before: four bars of one and a two and a three and a four and a, with the high on two and four. So it's one and a. several different speeds, right? That's the first leg. And you should do it slow, you should do it at a moderate tempo, and you should keep pushing the ceiling of how fast you can do it. Keep pushing it, right? And actually some days will be better than others. So now I morph that first four bars into my next four bars, which is swing. I'm going to be going one and a two and a three. So what just happened there? That's one and a two and a, right? Left, right, right, left, left, right, left, left, and then, so left, right, right, left, right, 
and then both hands on the dog. One and a two and a three. One and a two and a three. Right, both hands together on the dog, and then three. And you, you continue that, so watch. One and a a straight up shuffle. So now I'm going to go very slow because I want you to get this exercise. So I'm going one and there's my second part of the triplet. Da is together. Two and da together. Three and da four. In time and, and a little more contextual. There you go. Now that you do that for four bars, and you know when I and I'm four bars, I'm using that a little bit loosely. I think you should do it in fours or eights. Fours or eights. I think if you can do you can do four bars, do eight bars, you know that kind of thing. Even if you want to do twelve bars of each one, that's fine. I think you should avoid doing three or five or seven. Why? Because again, the majority or the bulk of gigs that you get are going to be rock, R and B. Even if you do you know cocktail gigs, jazz. A lot of times you're playing jazz standards, and all those tunes are based in eights. They're Usually eight bar phrases, jazz standards are usually 32 bars. Um, most pop tunes are eight bars or, you know, with four bars doing one thing, four bars, another thing is happening. And so you want to really feel four, you want to feel eight, you want to have that. Even, you know, and this has both, been both a criticism for me and a uh, compliment. I've had both given uh, to me over this. Uh, this is, you know, I've done this a lot in my playing, really felt the fours and eight. So that even when I'm doing a phrase... Like in a jazz tune, and there's a couple of Miles tunes that will have like the B section be 10 bars. And I tend to play that, in, especially in my solos, as 8 and 2. So I'm always gravitating to the 8. Now that could be good, you know, you might want to break that up and spend more time. I, don't, I haven't done enough of it, I think, in my life to really break it up. However, in my practice times, I do work on breaking it up. Should you? Yes. Do 5 and, on a 10 bar phrase. Do 5 and 5. Do four and six. Do all those things. But my home base is eight and two, and it says serve me well over the years. However, I see the criticism that uh, when I gravitate to, to that, um, it limits me in some ways. It limits me. So, but since since the bulk of my gigs are R&B, rock, and pop, uh, having eight be internal and four be internal is a positive. So let's let's uh, let's go. Let's go to phase three of this uh, of this exercise. So we've got that one and a two and a three right for four bars. Now we're gonna morph that into the first two triplets on this hand. We're gonna morph that into one and uh, I'm sorry one. So that's where it gets tricky. So we're doing this. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a. So that's that turnaround, right? It's four and a one and a, right? Four and a one and a. Now let's put it in context. So we're doing the, the shuffle version which is one and a two and, and for four bars into one and a two and a so nice and slowly let's put it in context let's start with the shuffle for four bars
beginning of it, which is one. Right, and so now I have went through the four permutations. This, one, two, three. 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 Four. This, one, two, three. This, one, two, three. Okay. Put them together so I'm flowing smoothly. Like I said, I am calibrating my neural maps. My neural maps, not neural maps. Well, maybe, maybe there's neural. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, here we go. Let me now add the metronome to this because you really, if you if you like me and you have limited amounts of time, you know, not like Mr. 64, you has a lot of time working on, you know, three and a half over 19, whatever, not like that guy, but you're limited amounts of time and you just want to have good technique. So whether you're doing a reggae gig or whether you're doing a uh, Latinish gig, you know, Latin pop, Latin gig, whatever, or you're doing a... Um, straight up Zeppelin tribute or Pink Floyd tribute. Your technique is good and your facilitation is strong. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to do this with a metronome because again I want to combine everything. I want to hear, combine good time with the whole bit. And we're not going to go too crazy for the first time, right, because I want you to see it and then we'll pick it up. Uh, I'm going to start my uh, close-up cam. So we got this at 101 beats a minute and I'm going to run through the whole thing. And then I'm going to do that modified version of this that I did on the pad. Because if you really have limited amounts of time, those last two, those last two, which is the uh, one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a, just going round and round on those, man. If you did that at you know different speeds, don't here. This is really important, you know. And um, I've went to so many GAD clinics, and he said this a bunch of times. Weckel has said this a bunch of times. Um, couple of these guys, don't, don't forsake practicing this stuff slow because there's a different, it's a different approach to how your muscles react to each other and you want to get that in there as well. So some, that's why some guys will say, well, I could do this really fast, but I have a hard time doing this slow. And it's because they didn't practice it slow and there's a different way that your muscles interact with each other. So here we go. I got this at one on one and let's go through. One, two, three, four. Not that quick, right? And you can see it. I went from that uh, one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a And there you go, right? I've already translated that first one. It's not even that difficult to do, right? And it sounds good. It's something that Gad did quite a bit. Quite a bit. All right. So let's pick up the tempo on this. Let's pick it up to 125. And let's see the difference. And you're going to see little discrepancies. And then let me go right to the modified version. You can see maybe little discrepancies, you know, and as I pray, it, it, when I have a, this is the weird thing, when, I, when I've not been able to practice, maybe except for pad, maybe for maybe a week or so because I've been either busy gigging or, or maybe I was on tour for 10 days and I didn't get to do that kind of stuff. When I come back, I, I can hear the little discrepancies and I can hear it. And then, but once I do it a few times, it's back in and I'm, I'm once again, I'm recalibrating my neural maps, neural pathways, however you want to put it. So here we are, we're at 125, let's see how we do. One, two, three, four.
Now, now that's more like a tempo that I would actually use probably, right? We can kick it up from there. But let me, before we do that, the, the rest of it I'm going to do on the more abbreviated version. So again, what is that? I'm just going to go round and round on those last two phases of this exercise. So I'm going to go one and up, two and up. one in there, you know? Uh, one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three. That way I'm not hitting three of these in a row because, you know, it sort of, to me, it interrupts the groove a little bit. <clears throat> and it's just, just you're creating. So let's do this. We're at 125. Let's scoot this up to... And we're at 138. Let's see how we do. And let's just do those last two. Those last two. Okay? And you know, I tune back in next week. I'm going to show you how to translate these into 16th notes and get a whole so sorts of cool polyrhythms. By the way, uh, you know, I make jokes about that 60-40 uh, guy. He is a little bit of a jazz Nazi, but um, I know that uh, he, ch he chooses what he wants to do. And man, have out of house. He's doing much better on his channel than I am, and go for it. But for most of us who love getting out there playing live for people, just enjoy. Here's the thing. Have a good time playing. Just have a good time playing whatever you're doing. Be, a, be the best drummer you can be. And like I said, the book of my calls are rock, R&B, and pop. And I have, I have had just as much a time, whether I was on a cruise ship doing some sort of, you know, jazz thing, uh, stablemates, or uh, equinox, which boy, I, I never got that tune right. Never got that tune right. Um, or whether I'm playing... A Zeppelin tune, or I've had fun doing country gigs where I'm doing this. I did a show called The Closer Walk with Patsy Klein, and most of the night I did this. And I just had a great time. I just love to play. So, no, no disrespect to Mr. 6040. I, you know, I watch his videos and I do learn stuff from them. Um, so, yes, have that at Haas, but, you know, my advice to you is don't pitch in your hole yourself trying to be the next jazz guy. Get out there and play and have a good time playing. Okay, so here we go. I took a little break. I had some turkey dinner. It's actually Thanksgiving's Day. It's still working. Yeah, I want to get this out for, uh, this actually is going to come out uh, not tomorrow, but the Friday after. All right, so let's put them together. I'm going to do the, the 138, as I said uh, a minute ago. And... Let's see how we do. One, two, one, two, three, four. Not too bad. And that's at 138. That's not ridiculously slow. And I have done it in my practice times at 140 or 150. Uh, even I think I had it one day at 157. And I'm still building it. And like I said, so yes, I, I'm 
you know, it's a new thing for me and I wanted to show you uh, myself doing it. And I'm actually going to do the pad part last and I'll record that and see how fast we can do it with just my hands. Uh, it, like I said, it's a great warm up. It's a great way to get yourself in tune with yourself. And as Mr. 8020 says, you want to lock in with yourself. Lock in with yourself, you know, and even if you're doing it at 140, 145, it's still going to affect your playing. Even just the, the, the simpler form, that may not be the simpler one for you, even this form, you know, that's going to lock in your playing if you've never done that before. It really does. It's just going to lock in your hands with yourself. And there's nothing better for you because here's the thing. Technique is technique. Technique is technique. It can be applied in a lot of different ways. You can apply what I just did in hip hop. You can apply what I just did in funk. So uh, even reggae, there's all sorts of ways you can apply that. Uh, even uh, Rosanna from uh, uh, Toto, Jeff Beccaro, has elements of what I just did in it. So yeah, you can apply it a lot of different ways. And like I said, if you get anything, if you don't get anything from this video, get this, please. The reason I do this is I didn't want to have a regular job. I don't want to work at Walmart or be an accountant or a lawyer. This is what I wanted to do. Because it's fun. Because it's fun. Anyway, sometimes, as you know, this year, life sometimes isn't fun. So, see you soon. See you on the next one.